Hi everyone, I'm Jane Osler. I'm EVP of Global Thought Leadership at Kantar and I'm joined here today by Raja Rajamanar, who is Chief Marketing and Communications Officer and Founding President of Healthcare at Mastercard. So welcome Raja. Tell us a little bit more about you and your role at Mastercard, your various roles. So I wear two hats. The hat number one is where I'm the Chief Marketing and Communications Officer for Mastercard. So responsible for all marketing, but also communications, which is internal communications and external communications. The second hat I wear is to manage the business, which is healthcare business, which I started at MasterCard about five years back, and uh, it's doing very well. So those are the two things that I do and keep myself busy. Very busy. So as you know, we recently released a new framework for marketers called the Blueprint for Brand Growth, and it gives evidence to marketers on what they should do to grow their brand through um, a growth driver and three growth accelerators. And one of the growth accelerators we call Find New Space, which is about identifying the right meeting point of motivation and context and defining the biggest possible playground in which your brand could be meaningfully different. And that's a lot of that is about incremental innovation. So our study shows that chances of growth actually are doubled if you can find new uses for your range, for your services and your products. Could you share with us an example or two about how MasterCard has been able to find new space in the current uh, ever-changing context? And what does find new space look like for a service organisation? So I think my title summarises it all. Right, so MasterCard traditionally is a payments technology company. However, we found an opportunity, a new space completely, which is healthcare, which is one of the biggest spaces anywhere in the world, one of the fastest growing, and also relatively speaking, it is totally broken. There is too much of friction, there is too much of inefficiency. And so what we said is, can we take the existing capabilities and infrastructure and everything that we have got, and of course the brand equity in the uh, payment space and move it into the healthcare space? And that has been working like a charm. So if you look at any industry, there are certain basic principles and there are certain basic uh, capabilities. If you know how to tweak them and manifest them in the context of the new space that we're talking about, that could be a gigantic opportunity. It is not incremental growth, then you're talking of a dimensional shift. It is a significant leapfrog, and that's exactly what we have done. And therefore, my title summarizes exactly the theme of what you have just mentioned. Fantastic. And I know you and um, at MasterCard continuously put technology, uh, machine learning and AI at work to deliver better outcomes for brands and consumers. Um, we did read about your recent Shopping Muse launch, um, which is an advanced generative AI tool that helps consumers to search and find products. So tell us a bit more about the AI revolution and how you're using that to find new space with consumers and attract more users of your services. So AI is something which we have been using for the last 10 plus years. I think it is the launch of generative AI, in particular chat GPT, that has really brought AI to the top of mind for most people, most marketers for sure. Now, when you look at AI, we have been deploying it both in the context of B2B, which is business to business, and also B2C, which is business to consumer. Now, I'll just give you one simple example of how we deployed it for B2B context which is typically for a network like us, a payments network like MasterCard, we get what we call as an RFP, which is a request for proposal that comes to us from a bank, for example. And then they say, MasterCard, tell us why we should issue our cards on your network as opposed to your competitor's network. In a very simplistic way, that's what the RFP is asking for. And then we respond why we are the most suitable for their needs, for their consumers' needs, and how we will support them and what the financials will be, why it is advantageous for this bank to come to us than to go somewhere else. So this is a day in and day out battle that we always go through. In the past, when we get an RFP, a request for a proposal from a bank, 
it would take us about seven to eight weeks to respond to that, to what we call as draft zero, which is everything is filled in except pricing. And then from draft zero, we keep tweaking the offer or uh, what we are, pl uh, are proposing to give it to the bank. And that's what sort of draft one, two, and three, and so on. But draft zero takes about seven to eight weeks. When we deployed artificial intelligence into this, what we call as RFP factory, and I'll tell you why we call it a factory, it actually creates draft zero for us in less than four hours. Where is seven to eight weeks and where is four hours? Now, of course, we then give a human uh, you know, oversight to this whole thing to make sure that the machine is not creating something crazy. What we find is the quality of the output for draft zero by the AI is far superior to what we as human beings do today. So the quality is fantastic. The speed is rapid. There is global consistency and the messaging, the narrative, the tone, everything is beautifully captured. And it's extremely compelling. And that's something which we have seen working very well in the B2B context. Now, let me take another example in the context of uh, B to C, how we are using particularly to identify new spaces and then go after these new spaces. Mm. So we launched recently something called MasterCard Small Business AI. We made the announcement. It's going to go live towards the second half of this year. What it ha In this particular thing, what happens is if you are an individual who wants to start a business, say, for example, I came from India to the United States and I want to start a small business. I have no clue. Where do I start? What area do I get into? And so on. So what this uh, uh, app does, which we call it the MasterCard Small Business AI, it asks me a few questions. So I said, do you know cooking? Do you know? Do you enjoy cleaning? Do you do this? Do you do that? What do you do? It asks me a series of questions to gauge what I could potentially be good at and what I would potentially be interested in doing. Then it'll tell me, Raja, you might want to start a bakery or a dry cleaning service or a window cleaning service. So you have got these three. Then it will tell me, are you mobile? And I say, yeah, I'm mobile. Then it will say, if you want to start the bakery, maybe you first started in St. Paul's, Minneapolis, or you would want to start in Detroit, Michigan, or you want to start in uh, Plano, Texas. It will give me the top three places based on data in terms of how many bakeries per capita are there in that particular geography. It also <laughs> tells me, if you don't mind going to a hot climate, like, for example, Texas, there is a government grant available in that particular district for you to start the business at big year $15,000. And if you're interested, I'll help you fill the form. So what happens is it takes me step by step like a mentor throughout the process based on data, based on analysis of me, my needs, and the environment and the opportunities available. That can be game changing. So we call this, uh, this MasterCard Small Business AI. And this is something which is going to open up a lot of opportunity for us in the small business area. Yeah. So these are the kind of examples where we are deploying AI, both the classical traditional AI as well as generative AI. Great. And one more question, if I may, which is about um, the bold move that you made a, a few years ago to actually remove the MasterCard name from the identity um, that now you know millions of people have on their cards around the world. What brought that about? Was that a recognition that um, people understood the visual identity very well? Um, was it to differentiate yourself? What, what was the aim of that? It was based on the study of psychology and neurology of people. So what happens is uh, human beings, when they see something, they process it very differently based on whether it is words or whether they are symbols. And in terms of the colors that are used, the shapes that are used, etc. It's a pretty fascinating field. So what happens is if there is a logo which has a word, the entire message goes through what we call as the cognitive part of the brain, which means they think about it, the thinking part of the brain. If it is purely a visual, it goes to but you know, this is just a placeholder name, I would say. It's not mm. scientifically very correct. I don't want to <laughs> overcomplicate it for the audience. But this is called primal brain. So the primal brain is the feeling and emoting brain. 
So what happens is when, when you see a symbol, your reaction is very different. You feel something about it. When you read a word, it's a very different kind of an approach. So what happens is if you want a large in the, ha in the hearts and minds of people, you have mm. to go visual and not verbal. And that's why we actually dropped the name MasterCard from our logo. And of course, uh, that was quite a bold move at the point in time when I first took it to my CEO and I said, I got a great idea today. Let's drop our name <laughs> our logo. He looked like I had multiple heads. Uh, and then, of course, we had to go to the board and then we got the approvals and all. And eventually, when we launched it, it proved to be a huge success for us. When I joined MasterCard, we were number 87 in terms of the top 100 brands. And today we are at number nine in terms of the most valuable brands. So this is something which we feel really good about in terms of the momentum. And every single aspect of our branding strategy was contributing to the momentum of our brand. Fantastic. So an emotive, emotive and emotional connection with consumers and an easy, easy way into the brand. Sounds like it's a great way to predispose more people towards your brand because of the subsequent growth. So thank you very much, Raja. That's been fascinating. Thank you. Thank you very much.